What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I just received this from WizKids. It is Big V's Presents Glory of the Giants Limited Edition Box Set Gen Con Early Release 2023. So I assume if you're going to be a Gen Con, you'll be able to pick these up there, which is pretty exciting. Normally, there's a pretty long lead time, or I guess long is a relative term, but a couple month lead time after a new book drops before you're able to get the miniatures associated with them so we have this box set which looks like it includes there is a total of 42 miniatures in this set and it looks like this contains five uh five collectible miniatures with exclusive paint schemes inside this is the limited edition box set so i wonder if the ones the paint job you get in here or potentially at gen con are unique to the ones you'll be able to get in the generic booster boxes. Now, some things that I'll show you that I think of interest are we do have some interesting creatures here on the back. As to be expected, we have a variety of giants, right? You would imagine so. Uh, some of the things we've already heard of and were revealed in the various videos that I've covered. And I'm looking up one just to make sure because I can't remember if it exists in canon here in Dungeons and Dragons. And if not, I'm very excited for it. So, okay. We have, um, again, there are some dinosaurs. We knew that there were going to be unique dinosaurs. I'm very excited because Dilophosaurus is now officially coming as a canonical monster uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, which we have not had. It also looks like, although not paleontologically accurate, uh, this one does have a frill, so it looks like we're going Jurassic Park style with the venom spitting in the frill, which is exciting. Uh, we have Deinonychus, Giant Poisonous Snake. We've heard about Giant Ticks before. Now, here's the thing. There are some unique sort of NPCs on here that I find interesting. One of them being Elf Druid Circle of the Primeval. Now, if you recall, the giant-based... Uh, barbarian and the circle of the primeval druid appeared in the same unearthed arcana and we know for a fact that only one subclass is coming to us in bigby's glory of the giants and that is the giant barbarian meaning the circle of the primeval druid was cut now here's the question that i have does that mean that these miniatures were put into production before the final book was created are there Circle of the Primeval Druids in the book as NPCs, as one of those monsters that they have? Or could Circle of the Primeval Druid be appearing at some point in a future book and we just don't know about it yet? We also see some other unique creatures here. Goliath Frost Rager, Goliath Giantkin, Furbog Primeval Warden, Tiefling Fury of the Frost Giant, Fire Rune Goliath. A lot of really interesting kind of things here on the back. You can get a little bit of a look here. I'll show you some of the various creatures. I assume that all of these, there are 42 here, so there may be more contained in the actual book itself uh, or variations upon them. But there are a variety of unique creatures on the back here. There are also some on the side. See giant links there as well. Again, me personally, I'm almost more excited for the NPCs and, like, the beasts than I am for the giants themselves. But either way, uh, I've got my miniature cam set up, so we'll bring it in close. But I also see things like orcs, some unique-looking bugbears and hobgoblins. So a lot of interesting stuff. We also have Big B himself. We're going to go ahead and open this up. Okay. So, this particular package, we've got three giants. We also have two... Oh, boy. <coughs> oh, that is a strong smell. Ooh, this packing tape. This is this is powerful stuff. Ooh. And then we have these two sort of brown paper packages, which I assume contain more. Uh, probably just two miniatures. But it looks like from the bat, we have a Frostmorn a Fire Hellion, and a Stone Giant of Evil Earth. So the Stone Giant of Evil Earth, I believe, is one of the ones we've heard about where uh, it is a 
a giant that has sort of embraced the elemental evil from Princess of the Apocalypse. So I'm going to go ahead and see how we, I think this insert inner box just kind of lifts out here. Yep. Okay, that comes out. Now, this is also unique in that they are tied with ropes. We've never really seen this. Now, this might just be something that's because it's a promo uh, specific thing, but these are ways we've never seen miniatures from WizKids tied down with the actual like string rope here you see with certain toys. So uh, again, just a single overhand knot, easy to go ahead and remove the lower section. Um, now the upper section here where you can see the rope, there is tape along the back here. So I think you're gonna have to cut that to, or you might be able to just kind of wiggle or just rip it, I guess that works too. Uh, but they are still tied in the back. So if you want to get the, oh man, that packing tape is strong. Let me tell you, I know you guys can't smell it, but like it, oh man, it is a lot. I'll, I'll tell you that. I don't, did I not leave my scissors in there? No. All right. Well, we're going to work our way through this and we'll get to the unboxing here. But while I'm doing this, let me ask you, what are your thoughts on these sort of like Circle of the Primeval Druid? Do you think it's going to be something that's just going to appear like an NPC because they already had it or they were working on it before it was finished? Or, or do you think we might see it in some form down the line in a future book? So let's go ahead and put this guy right here. And we'll have to adjust the camera a little bit to kind of fix it. But as you can see, uh, he's not fully together. He is missing his arm piece, which is right here, which will just go on a little keyway and it just clips right in. And there, now he's fully assembled. So I really don't have anything but good things to say about this particular miniature. Uh, you can kind of get an idea of the overall size and scope of this thing, but look at the detail and the intricacy on things like this. I don't know if this is a scarf or a loincloth or what you'd want to call it. But one of the things that I think is worth mentioning is, again, I've talked about it in the past. I always thought that WizKids miniatures were kind of injection molded, but I learned from speaking with the team at WizKids that they're actually all hand painted miniatures. That's why some may seem different than others. Now, I don't know if they've increased or changed the process and how they paint or how they go about it. But this speaks leaps and bounds for an improvement in quality in all aspects. So you can really see, again, the sort of fabric detail on, I guess, like I said, it's a scarf or a belt or a loincloth. But just the little intricacies of the woven pieces of, you know, of material here. And I'll see if I can't get this to focus in a little bit. There you go. And get a good idea of how just clean everything's looking. And even the armor... You can see all the, the mottled kind of like stone metal texture on it. it. looks really great. And then look at the face as well. You really get a lot of facial expression here, which I think is pretty cool. Now, again, this is a larger miniature, so you could do a lot more with the face. But we've seen some real kind of off-looking uh, faces with smudges and the eyes look weird. This looks fantastic. You can even see like hair in the beard. Uh, you've got the translucent effect again on the mace there, which I think is pretty cool. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a little bit bent, the mace, but with a little bit of hot water or a heat gun or a hair dryer, you can straighten that out. So I'll swap him out for the Frostborn, which is probably my favorite miniature from this set. She looks fantastic. Uh, we have a lot of the clear sort of translucent effects here. But also, again, just the expressions that these minis give off. You can see there's the kind of tr clear translucent here on the arm and on the shoulder. And I don't know if you saw it, but the actual like skirt dress here is all made of this kind of translucent blue ice looking material. And it looks great. But also make sure you're noticing the texture on the like the material underneath the veins in the arm the hand here, the axe, the, all of this has just great, great levels of detail. Uh, I'll see if I can't get that a little bit more in focus for you to see. But even look at the hair with the braiding on it. 
Uh, and again, like I said, there's like emotion on the face, which is wild to me how well, you know, everything is handled here. I really, really like it. Even look at the fingers with like the sort of frostbitten look to the fingers here. Really, really well done. Uh, all right, next up is our elemental. I think it's a stone giant. Uh, I forget the official name. I'll get it for you here. Hang on. The stone giant of evil earth. Uh, clearly, again, a stone giant that has embraced the temple or the elemental, earth elemental cult. And you can see that from the various pieces of armor. But, like, look at the club. Look at all the little details there on the club, the engravings, the extra little stones. This is probably my least favorite of the three major large giants that we have here. Uh, or huge giants, I should suppose. But you can still see a decent amount of detail in all of this added external earthen-based armor with all of its you know, symbols and various engravings. Uh, again, a very unique sculpt overall, but I do think the Frostmourne and the Hellion really kind of take it to another level. But either way, a still cool. But even look at this with the teeth and the expression. Just really, really well done overall, for sure. I do have two of these sort of brown paper bags. Now, again, I don't know if, if you were to get this at Gen Con, if the same miniatures, it's the same five. Or that's it's just like a random thing. So we're going to go ahead and open this brown paper bag. I'm hoping one of these I'm assuming is Bigby. If it is like a curated set. So first up here in our little packet is the giant Lynx. Again, it being a large cat similar to a bobcat. If you're unfamiliar with Lynx in real life. They're basically, again, they're almost identical to a bobcat. A few differences, tufts on the on the ears. Uh, on the tip of the hair there, but I can see there's a little bit of engraving or some sort of markings around the eye. This one has a little bit less of a stellar paint job compared to, it's kind of modeled. I don't know if that's supposed to be spots or what. Uh, a little bit messy compared to our three giants that we saw there. And oh, I I, uh, I, we, I also have confirmed, uh, which I think it may contradict what you see coming later, but these box sets are indeed the same five miniatures. And then lastly here we have the Goliath Cook, which is another, this one I think is immensely done better than that giant Lynx. We can see the tattoos, again, great job on the facial expressions. We have sort of the apron with various pockets holding different kinds of foods and things. And I really like that he's got this, what looks like a giant fork as either potentially a club or some sort of trident, or maybe just a means of serving food. But either way, this is a really nice and unique miniature and really is showing off a lot of the improvements that WizKids has made when it comes to these pre-painted miniatures, for sure. Just uh, again, as an FYI, if you're unfamiliar, my good friends over at WizKids do send these over for me to review. No money changes hands, though, and I can feel free to call them out on these if I think, uh, and I have in the past, if something looks a little subpar or a little bit off. But these are really, really well done. I mean, like, again, without even bringing it in close, you can kind of just see it in the detail in these minis. Like, just look at them. They're really, really well done. Uh... So I'm curious to see what the other ones look like. Like I said, I don't know if there will be more of these available at Gen Con. If they are at Gen Con, they'll likely be limited numbers because it says that that said it was a early release. Gen Con early release 2023, which obviously I think they sent that over to help build the hype, which does, I think, mean that if you are there, there will be a limited number of them. So if you're looking to get them, I don't know if it's going to be, and I and I will update you as soon as I'm there at Gen Con and I talk to the folks at WizKids. I have uh, some time scheduled with them actually early Thursday morning, so the start of the convention. And I will find out, are the minis contained in the early release box? I'll see if I can actually email them and maybe I'll do a follow-up quick hit video for you before the convention rolls around. Uh, where, you know, this might be, like, this is a guaranteed five miniatures. You'll get these every time. 
the three giants, the Goliath chef, and the giant lynx, or perhaps they are, in fact, a blind bag, and you just get whatever you get, and each one is different. But they said that it did have exclusive paint on it. What did it say? It said, limited edition box set, five collectible miniatures with exclusive paint schemes. So, perhaps the way these two are painted is unique to this set, not uh, what you could get normally if you were to buy, again, the blind box kind of boosters. So, anyway, very excited for this. Excited to see what else we find out at Gen Con. But also very curious about what this could mean. I'll take a picture of the back of that box and I'll upload it here to the community tab as well as on social media. For those of you who are curious, if you want to take a closer look and see if you can't find anything else out that's interesting from what's on those miniatures coming out on this set. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.